Hey everyone, and welcome to the third part for the tutorial about modeling the quilted chair. If you followed along with the previous two parts, this is more or less where we stopped. So this is the model that we have. We modeled the backrest, we modeled the seat, we made the legs and the holders for the legs. So now the only thing that's missing, so this model is finished, is the backside or actually the quilted part for this chair. Now, like I said previously in the second video, we can do this with a uh, texture where we can uh, get this thing quilted by using a texture. But in this case, we want to have geometry. And for that, let's see how we can create the geometry for this thing. So what I'm going to do first is select my backrest and I'm going to isolate it. Now, I want to select all the polygons uh, that I'm going to want to replace with the quilted geometry so for that i'm going to go in top of my smooth uh, turbo smooth put an edit poly on top of it now select my polygon turn on by angle and let's try with 20 degrees and click on one of these uh, polygons it should select more or less everything that's all the way up to this edge right here and this well there we go something like that and I want this thing to go on the lower side as well. So click it here. One more time over here. So one more time there and one more time there. All right, so without that. So what I want to happen is I want this thing to go all the way up to this edge right there. So in order to get that, let's see. So we cannot do that. All right, so let's check this side. All right, that's fine. So what I want to do is now click on the grow once. And actually in this, uh, on this side, if I grow once, it's going to go across that middle line. So actually it's okay over there. Let's check this side. Yeah, this side is okay as well. So let's turn off the angle and now simply go down and select all the polygons that we are missing so both sides this side and the other one and for some reason I think that the other side is going to basically have me select an extra edge and the reason for that uh, as I'm doubting at the moment is probably because when we made the cut for the center of the seat the geometry is overlaying with something in there, but that's not going to be a problem. So, oops, as I can see here, I just made a small mistake. I shouldn't uh, select these. There we go. Because I want to have this thing go more or less up until there. So that's fine. I can have this thing go downwards. There we go. Like so. And I do know this uh, is a bit of the, of the boring part, so, but we have to do it. There we go. Okay, it can work like this. It's not gonna be a problem. Uh, check this side as well. All right, awesome. I'm actually gonna leave this, th uh, this thing as it is. So you, if you want, you can go in and uh, get a better selection. But for now, I'm actually gonna leave it uh, as it is. So what I'm going to do here is detach this thing. Make sure it's not a clone, but actually detach the geometry. And now isolate it. Now, what I was talking about uh, when I said the backside is probably a bit screwed up is right here. When I did the cut, as you can see, we have a bit of a problem, problematic edge here. So I'm going to select these guys, delete them, and leave it like this. It's not going to be... A, too big of a problem because we're going to use this to get some deforming uh, going uh, for us with the help of the slide knit. So let's just clean it up on this side as well. So a mental note, if you're if you haven't started modeling this, when you get to the point where I added in those uh, two lines or when I cut in the lines uh, for the backrest, make sure you hold them off until you get to this point. So these two lines hold them off for a bit all right so what we have here is now this uh 
piece which actually needs to have the quilted geometry. In order to get this thing, again, uh, what I'm going to have to do is, like I said, use slide knit. But in order for slide knit to work, I need to unwrap this. So I'm going to quickly put uh, UVW mapping clear. It just gets rid of everything uh, that it might have uh, that comes with it. And now put an unwrapped UVW map on top of it. So I'm going to isolate this thing. And with everything selected, just do a quick pelt map. Start the pelt start to relax and commit actually let me just try and do this really quickly with the quick peel all right the quick peel is going to give us a better starting point now do a bit of relaxing with the amount of those polygons relax by the edges Okay, get polygons. Stop the relax. Check it out. So here it's, we have a bit of a folding, so we don't want that. Again, you know, with the edges or the polygon, just wait for them to straighten up a bit. Give it a bit of a stretch so it can stretch a bit. There we go. All right, I think this can work. So apply it, put it in. So turn it around 180, pack it in. So I get inside in here, turn on the snap. Like so snap in and all right. So we have this thing unwrapped. So now I'm going to click on my side uh, slide knit. If you don't know how this thing works, I do have a previous video. I'm going to put a link down in the description so you can understand how uh, to get this thing work, working better for you. So now I'm not going to change the UV scale, although I think that for this chair, it's probably going to be 150 centimeters, but let's go with 100 centimeters. I'm just going to click on unwrap selected. And what this thing is going to do, it's going to take that UVW map, put it on a geometry like this, what you're seeing here. And as you can see, we have a morpher on, uh, on top of it. So if I take this thing and now rotate it around 90 degrees and put it to the side, I can uh, then use this thing as a cutting board for my the geometry that I need. But now here's the thing. We actually need to create geometry for the quilt. That is not actually that hard because what this is, it's basically a box that's uh, turned 90 degrees. But there is an easier way of creating something like this. So the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to hold on control and right click, make a plane and make the plane, let's say, uh, two and a half centimeters. So two and a half by two and a half and make sure this thing has uh, well, let's go with two by two. So we just have something like this. All right, and put an edit poly on top of this thing and snap it all the way up here. Now here's the thing what we wanna do. We want to select on the middle edge and chamfer it with a small amount, like let's try 0 0.1. Yeah, 0 0.1 is gonna work with uh, two segments. Do the same thing on this side as well. So chamfer with 0 0.1 and two segments, select the middle lines that we just created here, move them downwards and select all the edge uh, vertices and then move them upwards a bit. Make sure everything is uh, in the same line. So now the reason for doing this is simply because now when we take this thing and let's move it out of the way, I can turn on my snap Make sure you have a uh, snapping turn on uh, with the vertex. Hold down shift and now move it on the Y axis until it snaps from one side to the other. And from here, let's uh, let's go with a bigger number like 50. So 50 copies for this thing. All right. So as you can see, 50 covers up this whole thing. Select all of them, isolate them and attach them all together. So control A, select everything, attach, uh, select again, just go uh, selection vertex, control A to select all the vertices 
and weld with a very, very small amount, something like 0.01. This is going to be enough. And what I want to do now with this thing selected is uh, I'm going to click on my X axis, which is going to snap my snapping to just uh, on the X. And from this point, I want to get to around here. So now I want to have another 50 copies of this thing. All right, so we have this big uh, geometry. So again, attach everything together, select all the vertices, weld again with a very small amount, like so, and there we go. So now we have this uh, really big uh, box made of smaller uh, quilted boxes. So in order to get this thing, I'm going to center my, uh, this thing, uh, my pivot to the object. And now if I take this thing and rotate it for 45 degrees, we actually have that quilted geometry. Now, the thing is, we want to have this thing uh, have a bit more details to it. So all we can do is just put a turbo smooth on top of it. And Right away, we get that nice looking uh, quilted look. So I want this thing to be on top of here. But before we do it, do anything to it, let's just check out and make sure that the actual size of these is uh, not too small or not too big. The way to check this thing is simply check your reference image. And in here, I can see that from the, uh, the bottom, up until the top, I have one, two, three, four, five of these uh, boxes or these squares. But the thing is, remember, we have this thing going underneath as well. So let's put in like another two. So one, two, three, four, five plus two. We want about seven of these squares to go from one edge to the other. And so far, if we take a look at here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's just scale it out a bit so now we have one two three four five six six and a half or seven this is more or less the right uh size for this chair i would venture a guess now here's the thing since we did the uh scaling what we want to do is go in here reset the x form for this thing but before we do that let's just make sure that uh this thing has enough of geometry so when it's starting to fold in, it doesn't uh, uh, run into any problems. So we, we can even further increase the iterations here. And that is in, uh, in case you don't have a poly budget to work with, and you can just splurge out some more geometry. So I'm going to increase this thing to two iterations, like so. So now we're going to get a much smoother result. So now on top of this, I'm, put a, I'm going to go to my utilities. And from here, choose Reset X Form and click on Reset Selected. Go in here, you're going to have this thing X Form over here. Right click, convert to an edible poly. All right, great. Now, hopefully this thing doesn't crash. All right, it did not crash, which is a great thing. So now, what we want to do is uh, make a cut that's the shape of this thing that we see here. And we want that thing to encompass this whole uh, area or cut a line in here the easiest way i've found to do this is when you have the morpher throw in an edit poly on top of it now select the border here as you can see and go and create a shape make sure it's a linear shape and not a smooth one because we want to have the actual jagged edges from the shape so click ok great now we want to select the line that we just created, which is this one. And another thing that you would uh, probably want to do when you're doing this is every time you're uh, going to select or create a shape out of this, there is a chance that the X form could be screwed up again. And the way to check for this is simply go in and throw in an uh, extrude modifier. And when you turn this thing on, you see, in this case, it's really uh, screwed up because it's starting to push this thing in the, in, the, in the Y axis. So if we try to cut with this, we're going to have a bit of a problem. So if you have this, 
issue. The way you can fix it is again, uh, go over here, reset the X form, and this time convert it to an edible spline because we don't want to have a poly for this. So now let's check it again. So go to extrude, and now we can see that we are pushing on uh, upwards. All right, awesome. So I'm going to select my uh, line along with uh, my base, isolate both of these, and now what I want to do here is, first of all, I want to save my work. So I'm going to go here and save quack, uh, save really quickly, control S. And the reason for that is because sometimes when you're doing this, Max can uh, randomly decide to crash. So now what I want to do with my geometry selected, I'm going to go to my uh, compound objects, choose shape merge, and in the top viewport, from here, click on pick shape and click on the line. What this should do is project that entire line and make a cut in the geometry that we have underlying here. Now, since this is a very dense geometry, hopefully Max will not crash and will allow me to actually get the cut. Uh, sometimes it can take a few seconds Sometimes it's quicker. It kind of depends on how uh, dense your geometry is. So let's give it a second. And as soon as this thing is finished, I'll be back. All right, for a second there, it looked like it was about to crash. But from what I can see, if I take a look at here, I can see that I have this line. So now what I want to do is go over here where I have the shape merge, put an edit poly on top of here. It's going to take just a second. Now click on polygon and it should select everything that's within here. Now, since we want to just keep this, I'm going to press control I and get an inverted selection and delete. So uh, since I don't need any of the other geometry, I just want to keep what's within uh, here. Great. And now here's the other the, the other thing you need to uh, be mindful for, because when you're doing something like this and cutting it, if I turn on my vertex uh, selection, you're going to see that I have a lot of flaring uh, vertices here. And that's going to be a bit of a problem because we don't want to have all of that. So what I'm going to do is uh, now I'm going to convert this. So right click and convert to an edible poly like that. And what I want to do again is select now all of my vertices and run a, clean, uh, a vertex cleaner by Shiva. This is a script that I'm going to leave a link in the description. So when you're running this script, what it's going to do is as soon as you click it, it's going to do a few calculations and give you a number which you can input that is going to take it as a base and every vertex that's not within that uh, number will be selected as a flare vertex and you will be given the option to have it removed automatically. Now, since again, this is a very, very dense mesh, it could take a few seconds. So let's give it a bit of time to work. And well, I'll be back as soon as the uh, calculations are done. All right, it took like 30 seconds, but as you can see, I have a threshold and now all of these polygon, all of these vertices that are not connected to a line have been selected. So I'm just gonna click on uh, clean it and it's going to remove all of them. So as you can see, 1,195 uh, vertices were cleaned up. So I'm gonna click okay. And basically I have the geometry to now project on my chair. So now the next part comes is I want to uh, get the morpher from here. So I'm going to remove this edit poly. We're no longer going to need this thing. There we go. So what I want to do now is go into my modifier list. And from there, I want to select a modifier called skin wrap. So let's uh, go skin wrap right here and click on add from here. Just select the underlying uh, geometry here that we have. All right, so now hopefully this uh, is not going to make it crash. As you can see, we have this uh, loading in here that is doing the building the parameter data. So it's usually it goes from 
25 to 50 to 80. So I'm gonna give it like a few seconds and hopefully it will not crash. Oh, there we go. It's finished as I was about to pause. So this is what happens now. When I turn on, uh, when I select my underlying geometry, if I go over here where it says object 001, I have this slider. So what I can do is now click and drag this thing all the way up to 100. And if I take a look at my geometry now, I can see that I have all of that quilted geometry really, really well uh, applied to this uh, thing. Now, what I want to do is select the geometry, right click, convert to an enable poly. There we go. So it's no longer bound to anything uh, like the uh, skin wrap that we have from this thing. So we no longer need this either. So now what I want to do is select the hierarchy and center to object. I want to center my pivot, select this thing as well and center the pivot as well. Uh, you rotate this thing so it's uh, facing up the same way. So 90 by 90. And now what I want to do is align both of these. So click on the align button, click here and go center to center or pivot to pivot, whatever works for you. Click OK. And now we're going to have the geometry being projected right here where the underlying geometry is for this chair. Now, since uh, the projection always projected this thing uh, at a certain distance from it, what we can do is slowly with the scale, just make sure it's a uniform scale, just reduce this number till about so and move it into position manually. Or we can just move this thing out a bit. And if that doesn't work, then always we have the option to manually try and fix this. Now, uh, moving uh, the vertices one by one is really not an appealing uh, idea. So what I want to do here as I'm going to go into my modeling uh, tools right here and in the modeling uh, in the freeform, we have this uh, brush called shift. So now shift works similarly like you have the move brush in ZBrush. So the way it does, you can select a certain amount of polygons or a certain amount of vertices and move them up, down or to whatever way you want. Now you can control uh, the size for this thing and the push. In this case, the fall off should be smaller or the strength should be lesser. There we go. So now I want to move this thing inwards a bit. Although now come to think of it, I probably should have when I was projecting this, I probably should have made it so it's a bit uh, closer to what our thing was so let's see if I can fix this or we're gonna have to go on the harder way all right so I guess I'm gonna have to go in and push this thing inwards and make sure it's flat within uh, where we want it to be so what I'm simply gonna do is just go with the conform uh, and manually start moving in uh, some of these uh, vertices and once I'm done, I'll be back and I will show you how uh, the result for this thing looks like. All right, so after trying to do the way with the moving of the vertices, I actually just said, nah, screw it. And let's go back and do this properly. So when you're doing, you don't have to spend all that time. So I'm one step back before I put in the morpher. So in this case, I'm actually gonna take this thing and move it all the way up until here. So now I know that this thing is in the middle like so. Again, let's do the same thing. Uh, move this thing upwards. So again, skin wrap. Add this uh, over here. Wait for the calculations to finish. Again, it takes a few seconds. Hopefully the thing doesn't crash. 
And as soon as this uh, thing is finished, again, we're going to get the geometry. But this time around, it should be the right size. So again, there we go. Move this thing up to 100. Uh, convert this to an edible poly. Center to object. Rotate around 90 degrees. Move it outwards and go and align this thing center to center there we go so now what happens is i can see that this thing uh flies flat a lot better than previously so i'm going to hide my original there and it's better because now i can see that uh in here this thing uh folds or tucks in really well underneath the piping in this case, though, I think I can probably get uh, or move some of these vertices outwards so it kind of incorporates better with this thing. There we go. So these these are just like small, very, very small uh, changes that you can do just to make it a bit more realistic. There we go. And here is another issue that you might run in. I'm actually kind of glad that this happened here is that if you have something like this, like as you can see, we have all of these uh, jaggedy uh, um, edges. The reason for this is that I had some distortion in my UVs. So when you're working with SlideNet, you generally want to have more or less perfect UVs. Since I was doing this for a tutorial, it kind of, I tried to wing it. So the way to uh, try to fix this quickly, again, is by trying to do it with the uh, relax the brush. So decrease this thing. Let's try it with, uh, there we go. This should give us a bit of a better result. But again, just so you don't have to fix it this way around or basically uh, not have this issue happen to you, just make sure that when you're creating the UVs, you generally have a really clean UV set. So let's just go over to anywhere that we might have that issue with the brush for the relax. And that should clean up the geometry fairly nicely for us. There we go. There we go. And as you can see, now it's a very, very clean geometry. Even here, give it another pass till it clears up better. All right. Great. So now we know how to fix that issue as well. So now all we want to do is slightly, like really, really slightly go over uh, any places that might be uh, with a gap because we remove the underlying geometry. So again, up until here, I can see that this thing folds quite well underneath my uh, spline. In here, actually, what I can do as uh, just increase the size of the thickness here. So let's try like a 0 0.35 or maybe 0 0.4. There we go. That should help cover up more of this thing. And now in here, oh, not 10.14, 0 0.40. All right. And just move in some of the uh, vertices so they're in place and they're covering up that uh, hole. Otherwise, what we can do is, like I showed you previously, go in here and with the uh, shift brush, gently move this thing underneath, like so. There we go. Until we get this thing to a position that we are happy with it, like so. All right, so now in this case, I'm just gonna go over the edges, do this the minor fixes, and I'll be back with you guys. All right, so in, after a few uh, minutes of just like pulling and pushing with the um, with the shift but uh, with the shift brush, I have my chair or I have my quilting uh, for the chair lie comfortably underneath uh, the piping here. Now, just so you don't get any of the issues that I had, make sure that when you're creating your geometry, first thing you don't do is you don't do the cut in here like I did it prematurely. 
So I had to deal with the geometry issue here. And another thing is make sure when you're doing the unwrap, you have nice flat uh, surfaces for the bottom and uh, the corners. So you're gonna have a really, really good uh, wrap with the slide knit. So with that, we ended up with uh, our geometry for the quilt looking like this. And as we can see, it's pretty close to what we have here. So with this, we are wrapping up the modeling phase for this chair. So, and I really do hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something new. If you do have any questions, leave them below. I will meet you in the comment section of the video as always. And if you enjoyed the video, then please hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.